And again, I don't want to be rude here, but maybe some of you say, oh, I'm just going to fast like eating chocolate for a week. That, guys, we really want to talk about tonight biblical scriptural fasting because we want to fast. We want to get breakthrough. We want to do it the biblical way. If you're fasting chocolate ice cream, I'm not trying to be rude to you or make fun of you, but we need to level up like for real, the American church, we got to level up. We've really made things, I think, just way too easy for people. So Vlad, give us some the scriptural way to fast, not not the way I want to fast, the way maybe my pastor has told me I could fast. Hey, if you can't do it, just do this on the side. What are some scriptural ways that we can fast? It's very simple. It's going without food for the purpose of pursuing God. Uh, mm. So complete abstinence from food for the purpose of pursuing God. If you go without food, without the purpose of seeking God, then that's a diet or that's a starvation. Good. Uh, but if you go to, uh, you add food to your pursuit of God, you cannot call that a fast. Now, I understand that in American culture, uh, we have Daniel's fast, we have a lot of other fasts. And first of all, in the Bible, it does not refer to Daniel's mourning as Come a on. fast. It was something that he was going through, uh, which was very important. It was it was brokenness of his heart. He was repenting. He cut away certain foods from his diet. But at the same time, the Bible never refers to it as a fast. It's what we label as a fast. And I'm not saying God doesn't honor our sacrifice, consecration. Absolutely. God looks at the heart. God is not looking at the calories you intake or not intake. And not fasting or fasting doesn't make you gain greater weight. Uh, with God or worth with God. God loves us the same. But at the same time, there is something that is reserved for people who practice this thing that honestly every religion in the world, outside of Christianity even practices. Uh, Muslims, one of the ways I even watched some doctors who would study the health of Muslims and would find their physical health better than some of the people in Western countries because wow. of their one month whole month of fasting and so and I believe that the Lord is restoring that in the American church so that we live a lifestyle of fasting. The, the teaching on you know I call it greasy grace where you kind of do whatever you want. You don't have to give your life for Jesus. You don't have to sacrifice. You don't have to deny yourself. You have to discover yourself. It's all about you, me, myself and I. Preach, that kind man. of a preaching of course, uh, anything on fasting is going to make it seem like it's a legalism. You know, he's trying to earn salvation. He's preaching works, you know, uh, salvation by works and everything. That is the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, fasting is a biblical uh, practice. It's been practiced for a very long time of abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. So good. So for those of you guys asking the chat, fasting is not eating. You can drink water. Cause some of you are saying, well, can I drink water? Of course, if you don't drink water for, I think three to six days, you'll end up dying. So you need it yeah. for sure. Always drink water. You never fast water. That's not biblical, but it's fasting food. And, and Vlad, I'm so glad you touched on the Daniel fast. Now, when we say these things, we know that it stirs up the chat. We know it stirs up people because we've been taught our entire lives. All we could do, just do a Daniel's fast. You don't need to fast food. You just do a Daniel's fast. So, so everyone's done the Daniel's fast, but it's important that we know, and we're not being biased and we're not being rude, but it is important that you brought this out. It is not a biblical fast. Daniel was doing this for breakthrough, doing it as a sign of mourning, but the Bible does not say it's a Daniel fast. So these are really like, how do I say this? Western ideas we've created and we've substituted them for biblical realities, for biblical fasting. And this is like one problem I have with the invite Jesus in your heart doctrine. I won't go on a soapbox and go ranting on this, but this is another thing where it's like, they didn't do that in the Bible, but we do this and when you talk against it, everybody gets mad. So if you start saying the Daniel's fast is not a biblical fast, People are like, what? But then we want to challenge you guys, go to scripture, go to the word of God, look to what Jesus referred to as fasting, what the disciples referred to as fasting, what the Old Testament referred to as fasting, and you're going to always find it was abstaining from food and drink, and of course, drinking water. So that's what we're trying to say here. If you are doing, let's say, a, and I'm going to quote it here in air quotes, a Daniel fast, praise the Lord. That's a great place to start, but we want to get you guys to a place of biblical fasting, even if it's for, and you could disagree with me maybe here, Vlad, even if it's for three days or one day, even if you start one day, like, Hey, I'm going to do no food for the day. I'm not going to eat at all. I'm going to drink water. We really want to get you guys into this biblical fasting because there's benefits. That's why, why should I fast? There's yeah. spiritual benefits. So what are some of those spiritual benefits, biblical benefits that we could see in regards to fasting? 
know, one of the first things that fasting does is it disconnects us from the world. Come on. The first temptation that the first temptation that humanity faced was with food. The first temptation Israel faced when they got out of Egypt was with food. The first temptation Jesus faced was with food. So that should tell us something about food um, is one of those things that gets us most connected because it comes from the ground to the ground. Our bodies, they came from the ground wow. and they need the ground to live. And the moment you live by food and food is everything for you, then what begins to happen is you stop thinking of yourself as a spirit that lives in the body you start seeing yourself as a body that happens to have a spirit somewhere trapped deep, deep inside. And no wonder a Christian life begins to be more carnal Come than on. crucified. It reflects, it, it's not spiritual. And why is it not spiritual? Because the spirit over there is like dying, hungry to be fed. And the body is pretty much the one that's leading the charge. And so um, the, the, the fasting challenge that we're doing this time, you know, the scripture that the Lord placed on my heart, Isaiah, is in Matthew chapter 17, verse 21. Um, and then in, in Mark chapter 9, where Jesus came down from the mountain and disciples couldn't cast out a demon. And Jesus says, you know, you faithless or unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I put up with you? And then when disciples asked him, hey, so how come we couldn't cast it out? Jesus says, because of your unbelief. And then he says this, and this kind shall only leave by prayer and fasting. It's interesting. Mm. The problem they had was faithless and in the simple terms, their connection to God was broken. The connection with God was not strong and perverse. Perverse speaks of your connection to the world being too strong. Wow. And Jesus says the solution is prayer, which is to rekindle your connection to God and fasting to disconnect from the world. And so I believe that fasting disconnects us from the world and prayer connects us to God and prayer and fasting go together. And so the primary reason, the benefit of fasting is to disconnect so that we can connect. It is to humble ourselves so that God can be more exalted. So we can decrease and God can increase. There's a, of course a lot of other benefits of, you know, getting a breakthrough for your family, believing for a breakthrough for your finances and, and so many other benefits. And most of the benefits of fasting and this is what I found out, do not happen while you're fasting. They mm. happen when you finish fasting. It was after Jesus finished fasting that He returned in the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't walk in that power or that power wasn't evident, manifested in the wilderness. All He was experiencing is temptation. So I always tell people that if you're fasting and all you're feeling is the temptation of burgers, and temptation of fries and uh, you know all the co-workers seem to have birthdays when you decided to fast <laughs> all of your family decided to be nice to you and bringing you donuts or maybe you're just getting this uh, you know stomach is grouching at you and you're getting moody cranky a little bit and you're like man why is this this is not working you know I'm all I'm feeling worse than before I can't focus I, I feel tired I feel fatigued I have a headache and everything well join the party Jesus Come was being on. tempted as well it was after the fast that the breakthrough happened. So don't get, be discouraged if angels don't show up in your fasting. Like people ask me, hey, so you, you fasted 40 days. So did angels show up? Absolutely not. I actually didn't expect them. I didn't fast so I can get a visitation. I fasted, honestly, I felt it was the Lord leading me. And so, but it was after the fast, things just changed, man. Like, the first thing that happened next month after the 40-day fast is that the partnership in my ministry doubled within first week for wow. no absolute reason. I don't know how it happened, why it happened. I, we, we looked at the account, I looked at it, I was like, oh my goodness, what's happening? And stuff. So God just starts shifting things in the ministry and in my own life. And so I really think that God blesses obedience, but obedience in the scripture always leads to sacrifice. And so part of that sacrifice is fasting. So good. And I think one of the things as well, just add as a benefit is it declutters your life. If you like guys, when you start fasting, you're going to realize how much time you spent talking about food, thinking about food, eating food. I mean, 
I'm married, y'all. When we're going to try to get some food, what are we going to eat? We spend sometimes 30, 40 minutes talking about where we're going to go eat. What are we going to eat? Where are we going to, are we going to order? Are we going to make? So you spend a lot of time and then you spend the time preparing the food. If you, if you cook, okay. Or if you're like me, you just door dash. And then you spend the time eating the food. So now Vlad, you go from having say two, three hours a day. And that's if you're just eating to survive. Like I do, I don't enjoy eating. I just do it. Cause I, you know, I want to live still. Then you have this extra time. What am I going to do with all this extra time? My mind is so empty. I, I have this time now to pray. Now, instead of thinking about, you know, in and out burgers, animal style fries, sorry for all you that are fasting. I'm now thinking about prayer. I'm thinking about God. I'm thinking about his presence. I'm thinking about the nation. So it really does detox you. It declutters you. It rehabs your body. It rehabs your mind from all of the clutter and all. And, and like, even if you go pray, oftentimes when we're in worship or prayer, we, we start thinking about what we're going to eat tomorrow. But what happens when you're not eating tomorrow? then you have that extra time to spend with God. So we really want you guys to replace the time you spent thinking about craving, eating with spiritual things. Cause if you don't add, if you're not, if you're not spiritual in this fast that you're doing, then you're just dieting. Okay. And the world diets. So we want to be spiritual. Now there's, we're about to hit 3000 here, Vlad. There's a lot of people in here. They're like, wait, you have a book, uh, which by the way, guys, the book is called fast forward. And then also I want to talk about the challenge. What is this fasting challenge you're talking about that you're doing? Is this something that people can join? Can I get on the fasting challenge? Where do I go to find this? Uh, just explain quickly here what the fasting challenge is that you're doing. Well, Isaiah, I would not recommend you to do a fasting challenge. <laughs> so uh, I feel like you're fasting all the time. But um, a fasting challenge is started yesterday. Um, okay. But people are still feel free or people are still able to join in, you know, coming in a little bit later. Um, and it's 21 days where people are choosing to uh, choose a fast. Now, biblical fast is abstaining from food. But I do understand that some people are like, maybe some people are pregnant. Some people yep. are working at jobs where they absolutely cannot do it for 21 days. So we have like outline. I outlined for some of them where you know, maybe you can fast every other day um, or good. fast three days and then take, uh, you know, two days off or fast where you don't eat uh, during the day and you just eat a small meal in the evening because the early church actually fasted every Wednesday and every Friday mm. and they would break the fast at 3 p.m. So it was like a half a day fast, but they did it twice a week. And so this was a habit for them. And so um, we just, I just encourage people to find whatever works for them that's in line more with the scriptures, but also with their situation. So like, for example, if somebody is on heavy medication, you know, uh, to go full 21 days on water might be dangerous, even though I have heard a lot of testimonies by uh, scientists and doctors, not even Christian ones, where they cure people of incurable illnesses by a 40 day or a 21 day water fast. Now, of course, mm. they monitor their vitals and all of the stuff. So, of course, I don't recommend, I'm not a doctor and I will not recommend anybody to do a fast just to get their health problems solved. But the Bible does have scriptures to confirm that fasting brings a speedy healing to our bodies as well. And so part of that challenge is that we encourage them to get the book they can download it or go on Amazon and read because actually the book is 21 days. It's a devotional. It's, it's a 21 days for each day. You get the prayers, you get the scriptures, you get the encouragements, uh, spiritual encouragement, as well as the health encouragement of what's happening to your body. And um, we also sign them up on the email. So we send them that in the email form and give them some other resources that they can take together either with their church. A lot of churches are doing some kind of a 21 day prayer or fasting. Yeah. And so we just encourage people to ju jump on the train and, and to do it. There is really honestly nothing special about 21 days. I know we took it from the book of Daniel that he did it for 21 days, but there's no magic attached to it. People say, well, if you do it for 21 days, you'll break back bad habits. A lot of studies have been debunked already that 21, it takes 21 days to break a bad habit. Um, it's just, just a number. You can do it 40 days if you want to. Uh, you can do it 80 if you want to, but 21 days is a good kind of a, giving almost like a month to the Lord to refocus, to reset. And the Bible does say to seek first the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added to it. So I see this more as uh, taking the first month of the year to kind of set your heart right 
to detox, like Isaiah, you mentioned, to detox your soul from all of this garbage that we have picked up and to reconnect ourselves back to God, disconnect ourselves from the world and hopefully set a rhythm for your life in a way that's going to bring a breakthrough. Uh, this fasting challenge is based around the verses that I've mentioned. This kind does not leave but by prayer and fasting and the Lord gave me a word, a specific word last year and he said, because we do this regularly, but I, I didn't open it to other people. Uh, we do it just for our church, but we have online presence now. And, and I don't know, I felt like in my heart, what if we were to do it with the online community? And then as I went into prayer, I felt the Lord gave me this word. And he said that I'm going to break certain things off of people that couldn't be broken any other Come way. On. Because not everything is a demon. There are things that you have that are still have flesh and there yes. are still problems that we have that we created and we are the problem and God wants to crucify us uh, and He got the demon out but He also wants to get us out of the way. And so and fasting is one of the best ways that that could happen. And you know, I got sick, Isaiah. On the way from Romania, I got a fever and um, as I was laying home and recovering, I started to kind of Google more about how to beat fever faster, how to get rid of uh, fever and everything. And um, I found something out that's very simple. Most people already know this, but it became like a revelation to me that a fever is actually a body increasing a temperature so that bacteria, viruses, and all of these foreign things that's not supposed to live there, that they will die because a lot of them cannot live when there's a higher temperature. And I felt like preach. the Holy Spirit dropped that in my spirit. He says, some of us, we have certain foreign things attacking our lives. Preach. And all we have to do is what our bodies knows to do. Increase the temperature. Increase the spiritual temperature and those viruses will go. And those bacteria will go. And some of these challenges you are facing, they will be broken. So many believers around the world testify of that. And you, is this mag something magical about fasting? Absolutely not. You just go without food and your problems get over. No, it's just something happens spiritually your temperature increases, your connection to God gets stronger, your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit gets sharper and a lot of these problems that you're dealing with, this kind gets removed. And I love that you're mentioning that verse because that verse he's talking about a, a stubborn demon, a demon that was yeah. stubborn, the disciples couldn't get out. So I think what you said is so good. Some of you will realize during this fast that you didn't need deliverance, you needed discipline. And some of you will realize you needed deliverance. I think both is gonna happen. Some of those demons that have been hiding are gonna come to the surface. I don't know, is there anything a demon hates more than fasting and prayer? I don't think there's anything he hates more. So may, hey, some of you need to fast him out. Fast that demon out, pray that demon out, uh, make that demon uncomfortable. People are like, I don't know why the demons won't leave. I'm like, I wouldn't leave you either if I was a demon. You gave me Wi-Fi, you, you're feeding me every night. Some of you, like really you're making your spiritual house, Matthew 12, you're making your spiritual house just way too comfortable for demons. So fasting and prayer, makes demons uncomfortable, it makes your spiritual house uncomfortable. And so I'm, I'm also glad you mentioned, Vlad, the difficulty of fasting. Because a lot of people in the chat think it was easy, just, oh, I could just fast and Isaiah doesn't struggle, Vlad doesn't struggle, it's just super easy for them. But guys, realize, like Vlad said, there's temptation that comes, there's trials that come, and it's not always easy, especially, now you could add to this too, Vlad, the first in my opinion, first two, three days is absolute worst because your body's, all the toxins are being purged. You have a headache. Maybe you're withdrawing from caffeine and coffee or whatever tea you might drink. And so the first few days are the, in my opinion, the worst. And then your body gets over that detox. All the toxins are, are cleansed out. And then it's, it gets to be more smooth sailing. Now I've never done the fat longest fast I ever did. I think was like six days and I lost tons of weight, but I've never done anywhere close to 40 days. But for me, a few days, things started getting easier. Now the, the fasting challenge, let me just circle back is this something we can get on the website? Is this something that we just, we're going to do it 21 days? Or is there like an official page where we can find out about this? Yeah, it's pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge. Okay, mods, pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge. I need to get this in the chats on both pages. All the mods start spamming that so we can get more info on that. And then I also want to ask you, you have a, a chapter in your book called Fasting is Feasting, which I love that name because obviously it's an oxymoron, right? Fasting is not eating, but you're saying fasting is feasting. Can you explain a little bit about this whole idea of fasting is actually feasting? Uh, and this Again, guys, all the details in the book, we're answering a lot of questions tonight. We're going to go about an hour, so of course we can't cover the whole book, but make sure that you guys grab that as well. 
Yeah, I'm going to read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 3, where that idea comes from. And God says, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger and fed you. So watch this, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he may make you to know that the man shall not live by bread alone, mm. but, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. And so God actually allowed Israel to experience real physical hunger so he can feed them. Now at first it seems like, oh, he just fed them with manna. But the Bible says the real reason he allowed them to hunger so he can feed them with his word. Now, wow. of course, they never got fed with God's word. They got fed up with the fact that God wasn't giving them, you know, physical food fast enough and they complained and they grumbled and that's why their, you know, 14 day journey in the wilderness turned into a 40 day, a 40 year journey in the wilderness. And so I really believe that what fasting does, not only fasting helps me to identify with people in the world who don't have anything to eat and who are actually hungry and wow, they're fasting not by choice, but by the fact of the circumstances so it helps me to identify with the poor and the broken world a lot of people are starving today and so i choose to identify with them but fasting what it does spiritually is that it reminds me that there is more to my humanity what it means to be a human than feeding my body there's a spiritual part of me that gets as hungry and it needs food as my physical body. In fact, I remember uh, sometimes when I when I would fast and I would feel this, you know, this ache first few days, this hunger, this, you know, detox and, and I'm like, man, I'm just, I can't focus and it feels so, so bad. I feel like I'm going to die, like all of those feelings. And I felt the Holy Spirit said, that's how your spirit feels a lot of times. Wow. He says, it's dying, it's aching, it's hungry and you feed it so terribly. You feed wow. it just with rumps just you know like little devotional uh, chapter there or chapter there but you're not giving it a feast and so what happens during fasting fasting is that you can really about third or fourth day sometimes you feel this shift where you almost like when you're reading the word you feel like you are actually feeding on the word mm. you're you actually you're receiving this spiritual nourishment um it's, it's incredible. The, the Word of God just becomes a, more alive. Your, your mind is just more receptive to it. Your, your understanding seems to be more enlightened. It's because your body kind of goes down and your spirit is now being fed and giving, uh, given more attention. So I always tell people that if you're fasting and you're not reading the scriptures, if you're fasting and you're not feasting for your spirit, then you're really just starving. You're not fasting. Biblical fasting is, has to be spiritual in purpose. And one of the best things that we do is we feed our with God's Word when we fast. So good. Talk to me about the threefold cord. You have another chapter called the threefold cord. What is the threefold cord? And then also I want to say many of you in the chat that are going to start fasting, I hope this is encouraging you, firing you up to fast because I'm telling you right now, this is going to happen when you start fasting. If you've never fasted before, this is what's going to happen. You're going to say, how did I live without this? How did I live so much of my life not doing this because of it brings you that much closer to God, that much closer to Jesus. Interesting, let me just side note here. When the disciples were saying, hey, the, the Pharisees were accusing us of not fasting and the Pharisees were coming to Jesus. Why aren't you guys fasting? Jesus made an interesting statement. He said, why would you fast when the bridegroom is here? Like when the bridegroom leaves, think about this, then you're going to fast. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be distant from you, but the fasting is going to bring you back in proximity. So one great mm -hmm. thing about fasting is it brings the presence of God closer to you. If you feel distant, mm -hmm. if you're like, man, I feel like I've had a breakthrough. I feel far from God. Like there's this gap between me and God. Jesus says, you didn't need to fast when I'm next to you, but now that I'm far away and I'm leaving mm -hmm. you, then the bride mourns the bridegroom now now we mourn and we call back that bridegroom and so mm -hmm. super super powerful thing about fasting is it really makes the presence of god strong some of you are like mm -hmm. what does that even mean you're not going to understand if you know you know you'll start understanding when you start fasting because you're going to feel and i don't i don't like vlad talking too much about like feelings and emotions because I, I i make some people feel bad that don't experience in that tangible feeling sense but i don't want to discredit the fact that you will actually feel 100%. closer 
closer to the presence of God. And we're not talking about, you know, just some physical, oh, I have chill bumps now whenever I pray. But I'm talking about there's a spiritual awareness. There's an activation in your faith of, man, I feel closer to God. I feel like God is right there. Like he is Emmanuel, the God that walks among us. He's not a God that's far off on a cloud, sitting on a throne, shooting light bolts at, lightning bolts at me. But he's actually right here in my midst. And that fasting, according to Jesus, it brings that closeness. All right, I just wanted to throw that in there, uh, throw that in there, Vlad. Talk to us about this threefold core that you talk about in your book. I, I agree. I'll, I'll piggyback off of the thought that you just mentioned. I don't think, Isaiah, that fasting brings us closer to God as much as I feel like it makes us aware of how close God is. That's good. Because, because you know, God really can't get closer to us than living inside of us through His Come Holy on, Spirit. Come on, preach. But, but most of us are so unaware of that and we live our life as though God doesn't exist. We, we, I, I call us sometimes practical atheists, mm. which we believe in God, but we live as though He doesn't exist. And if He does exist, He's so far away. Scripturally speaking, He actually, He can't get closer to you than already He is through His Spirit. It's and good. you cannot really get closer to Him, but your awareness of His closeness can grow or it can shrink. And so fasting is one of those things that can increase your sensitivity as well as awareness of the presence of Jesus that you already carry. It's kind of like, you know, when Jacob slept and then he woke up and he's like, oh my God, I didn't know God was here and stuff. Mm. So, you know, he became just aware of the presence of God that was in that room. And so a lot of times that's what happens during uh, fasting. And that's why those of you who maybe are facing, you know, a temptation or a struggle uh, when you're fasting, just persevere because you will also experience those sweet moments of deep concentration, uh, consecration, deep weeping. Um, you know, that's one of the things that I look forward to in fasting is for God to, I call it, open the well of my tears, you know, wow. because if if we because even in that verse you quoted right now it deals with mourning yes and stuff so there's something that happens where it's just like this groaning that comes in that weeping and you can't force that you know i can listen to a sad uh, music or or a sermon or something but it's different when the spirit of god just breaks the fallow ground and the tears begin to flow and there's a sense of purity there's a sense of cleansing that begins to take place in the presence of god you know you, you feel you sense it's so near um and it's just amazing the threefold cord, uh, so um, in book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible talks about the threefold cord is not easily broken. And so I like to use that as a reference to uh, prayer, fasting, and giving. Uh, prayer, fasting, and giving as the three weapons that God gives us against the three main temptations, which is lust, greed, and pride. Mm. And so, and if you see in Matthew chapter 6, Jesus corrects the spiritual disciplines, he starts with the giving one and he corrects the prayer and then he goes for the fasting. He actually corrects all three spiritual disciplines. And in all of the corrections Jesus gives, he doesn't say that his followers were to not fast, not give, not pray. He just corrected the motive for prayer, for fasting and for giving. And if you would practice fasting prayer and giving, you will see that it will help you to conquer your three main enemies. Prayer helps you to conquer pride because the real reason wow. we don't pray is not because we're busy, it's because we're proud. Fasting helps us to conquer lust because lust has to do with the craving of the flesh and fasting is really a preparation for temptation. It's subduing your appetites, putting them under the control of your spirit, under the control of God's Word. Thus, when the temptation presents itself, your spirit is already in it's already like a boss of your soul and of your body. But if you never fast and you never train your appetites not to get what they want, when they want it, how they want it, then you really, your appetites are ruling and reigning your life and you will have a difficult time be led by the Spirit because in reality, you're dictated by your appetites. And so, wow. and the giving conquers greed. You know, and greed is the hardest one. Um, greed, materialism, love of money. And most of us don't think we're greedy. We think it's the guy who has a bigger house is greedy. It's the one who has a nicer car is greedy. But, you know, how I deal with the issue of greed uh, when it comes to giving is 
in Matthew 6, Jesus dealt with giving alms in the beginning. And then after fasting, He dealt with the giving part that's called giving your treasure. And when I was younger, I never saw the difference. I always saw those things are the same. You know, giving to somebody, uh, you know, you're driving through a highway, you're seeing a homeless person, you're blessing them. Somebody comes to your mind who's struggling with the bill, uh, with the paying their, uh, their house and you, you're blessing them. So that's good. The Bible says to do that in private because you don't want to embarrass the person that you're giving this to. But when it comes to giving of your treasure, that's a different story. That's, that's the giving that hurts. And so that's the giving that honestly heals and hurts. And so that's a sacrifice. And sacrifice is always measured by not what you give, but what you have left after you have given. And wow. therefore everyone's sacrifice is measured differently. I can give, you know, uh, last month we gave all of our money and it was a large, the largest uh, sum of money that our church has ever received. Me and my wife, we were saving this for a few years. And so we are in the middle of our building fund. And the Lord put on my heart a while ago, I was wrestling with it. I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. And so, and then I talked to my wife and we prayed about it. So we decided to give that, you know, and there's a certain death that happened uh, when that happened. And so that sacrifice, it's not how big the amount was. That's not what measured in God's eyes. What measured that sacrifice is the fact of what I had left. And which wow. at, on that Sunday I had nothing left, and so but <laughs> uh, but God is faithful and God is good, and and He He led me into it. And interestingly, actually Isaiah, the same service, somebody came from another city and they gave exactly same amount right after me, and then a pastor from California whom I've never met, I don't know him from Adam, felt that God called him to do the same. He flew to Tri Cities when I even wasn't here no and way. brought exactly the same amount check to Hungry Gen for the building fund. So it was definitely wow. God working, but you know, we needed to make that sacrifice. And you know, so the giving, the praying, and the fasting, I believe they work together in helping us to defeat our three main enemies, which is pride, greed, and lust. So good. Oh, guys, get the book. Fast forward. Okay, I want to skip a few here and ask you about not telling anyone you're fasting because when we've been talking about this, I read, I read the chat. You know this while I'm preaching, while I'm talking. I'm, my eyeballs are always reading the chat. If you guys wonder what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the chat. And throughout the broadcast, there's one or two people that will say, you guys shouldn't be talking about your fast. You shouldn't be telling us that you are fasting right now. And uh, I, of course, much out of context, which we'll talk about. But what are your thoughts on when Jesus says, don't tell not to tell anyone that you're fasting should we tell people we're fasting should we avoid telling people what do you think about you know we're doing these corporate fasts our church is doing it i know your church is doing it everybody's doing it right now which is great i don't want to i don't ever want to talk anyone out of it do do it churches should all be doing it but what are your thoughts when people say well you shouldn't tell anybody that they're fat what that you're fasting because jesus said don't tell anyone yeah, I mean, it's in the same uh, setting that Jesus also said, don't tell anybody that you're giving. And He actually used the phrase of don't let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. And so uh, if you ever give into your church, not only you know that you've given, your bank knows, you've given, IRS knows, you've given, your church accountant <laughs> knows you've given. So that's already three people that I can count. Most likely your wife knows that you have given. So not only your left hand, there's about tw six other hands that know. So Jesus is not using it exactly that uh, don't let your left hand not know what your right hand is doing. It's just a symbol of saying that you don't want to blow your horn and you don't want to do it for the reason of being seen because mm. it actually defeats the purpose of fasting. The purpose of fasting is to be seen by God, not to be seen by other people. We do see in the scripture of a corporate fast where uh, Esther, she led a whole nation yes. to three-day fasting. And so we see that also Samuel led a nation to fast we see other people in the Bible. God even commanded Israel to fast on the Day of Atonement to afflict their souls. And so we see in, uh, in Acts chapter 13 where people fasted and they ministered to the Lord. So the fact the Bible that tells us that Paul and Silas and other so people... So the Bible tells us Egypt. they fasted. Yeah. The Bible actually tells us... Yeah. Okay, Jesus keep going. Sorry, I just wanted to point for that 40 out. Days. How did, I mean, somebody knew that he was fasting for 40 yes. days. He told somebody that he did that. And some, Matthew had to record that. And so I think that the, the purpose, the deal here is your motive. If your motive is to be perceived as more spiritual, um, then, then it's wrong. Um, if your motive is to, for example, you, you're letting, you know, the people that you need to let 
know that you are fasting so that they don't invite you or why you're not able to come uh, to a particular gathering, uh, then you can do that quietly, discreetly without making a big deal or making fishing for that. The danger is fishing for that comment. Oh, wow. Wow. That's so crazy. Wow. That's so awesome. The thing is, you want to deflect all the you're so awesome off of yourself unto Jesus. The more you get it for yourself, the, the less of the benefit the fast will serve you. So I believe it's dealing with motives. And most of us have a hard time discerning our own motives. So when somebody starts judging other people's motives, to me, I'm like, man, I, I usually go to prayer and the Word of God and do fasting so God can cleanse my motives. And here you are with the gift of discerning motives. You already know all of my motives and why I did what I did. I'm like, wow, wow. you are so spiritual. So I don't um, know other people's motives and I just want to be making sure that my motives are pure before God. And if some of you are watching and you're like, we shouldn't be doing that. Um, and so well you do it the way that you know how to do yes. it uh, this this fast is we actually are leading other people encouraging other people isaiah you have no idea how many people have reached out who have never done it and so yep. they feel encouraged they Lots feel of heard in the chat too tonight yeah they feel like man wow thank you I, I had so many questions how do i do this how do i do that and so we did that just to help people and if that's bad to help people then I, i'm sorry man but that's really the real motive behind it i care less what people think about me uh uh, when it comes to fasting because it I don't believe it makes me more holier it makes me more better than you or another person uh, I believe it's just each person's conviction and we all have to follow what the Lord tells us to do and as leaders and as pastors we have responsibility a lot of times to lead people into uh, certain things yes, we have to model yes. things and so we have to model our prayer we have to model our giving we have to model our evangelism we have to model things and if we don't model Paul says to Timothy be an example how can you be an example if you are anonymous Come so on. to be an example like my marriage has to be an example it doesn't mean that I have to blow the horn and always post a photo every day of my wife kissing my wife and saying what I gave her but if I'm never talking about what the Lord is doing in my marriage then I as a pastor uh, could fail in the sense of being an example to the flock. That's so, so good. I love what you said there, Vlad. I think a lot of people overlook when Jesus said, and I want everyone to notice what Jesus said, let your, people are going to get mad about this, by the way, but this is going to go word for word, Jesus. Let your light shine before men. So first of all, he says the light's yours. So let your light, so they may see your good works, so this is not even talking about like what God is doing through you, brother. You know, a lot of us like, don't take any credit. It's all God, which I love that. Praise the Lord. But we go so far extreme. Jesus says, let your light shine before men so they might see your good works. And then here's what they're going to do, Vlad. You already know, but I'm just pretending you don't because I'll pretend, you know, you're just the chat here. So they'll see your works and glorify your father who's in heaven. So they see what you're doing and the works you're doing and the labor and the fasting and the prayer and the living right and the reaching people. And they say, wow, look at Vlad or look at Isaiah or look at Pastor Jamie or look at Pastor Sam or look at Pastor Greg or Mike or whoever. And they say, man, glory to God, glorify God. God, you're so powerful. You're so strong. So I think if we don't talk about the things that God is doing through us or with us, we're not allowing people having the chance to see our works and glorify God. Nobody's glorifying us. Nobody's getting paid to fast. Nobody's getting glory or credit. We gain nothing by saying, oh, you did a four day fast or you did a seven day fast or 21 day fast other than we want to glorify God and challenge other people to get on board. So no, guys, remember when we're taking scriptures in context, if Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and you're not a Pharisee, you don't need to stress out. Be like, oh, okay. He was talking about the Pharisees. Isaiah Saldivar is not a Pharisee. I'm not doing it to gain attention. I'm not walking around the house like, oh, I'm fasting. I'm discreet about it. You know, if I'm fasting, for example, and we go out to eat and there's 10 pastors, okay? We're all sitting down at whatever restaurant pastors go to, Texas Roadhouse, I don't know. And we all sit down and eat. I'm not gonna sit down at the table and say, oh, hey guys, just real quick, you know, I know we're at the conference with 10 other guest speakers. I just wanted to make a really quick announcement to the whole restaurant. I am currently on a 10 day water fast, so I will not be eating. I will, I do not need a menu. I'm not ordering. Thank you guys. I'm on this 10 day fast and what, you know, give them a little pageant wave. 
I'm not going to do that's what that's what Jesus was saying Jesus was saying don't do that don't do things so that people can see you don't walk around with bad breath so everyone knows you're fasting like wear deodorant brush your teeth live normal don't complain we all we all know you have a headache it's easy to complain i have a headache because i'm fasting okay that that's not a, that's not the w- way to do it guys you know people walk around the church, i have a headache because i'm fasting it's like no one even asked you you know what i'm saying so i think that that's what he meant like don't be pompous and religious and proud i don't yeah. think he meant hey guys we're gonna do 21 day fast as a church let's all do this together let's hold each other accountable and that's another thing i don't want to go long on this but even if somebody knows I'm fasting, they could keep me accountable. Hey man, I'm really mm-hmm. struggling. Dude, I'm struggling too. Let's struggle together. You got this. You have eight more hours. You have two more days. Do not give in. Mm-hmm. Do not eat. Man, come on, let's break through together. So I think it's actually amazing to tell somebody, hey, I'm fasting. Will you keep me accountable? Again, we don't need to bust through the church on Sunday. Oh, I'm fasting. How you doing? I'm fasting. You know, yeah. Some people do that. They walk around all day long. I have a headache because I'm fasting. So mm-hmm. there's a balance. And I love what you said, Vlad. We need to be just be use your conviction now here's the other side that's that's what i think jesus meant the other side is if you're super convicted and you're like god told me not to tell anybody then don't tell anybody if you're super convicted then don't tell anybody then do what your convictions are but don't start getting up in the chats and getting all your friends you shouldn't be telling anybody and start becoming Mm -hmm. the pharisee this is a word right here vlad Mm -hmm. don't start becoming Mm -hmm. the pharisee that you're accusing everybody else of being don't start becoming a pharisee by trying to accuse everyone else of being a pharisee so i i love what you said because there's a balance Isaiah, i found out sometimes when people try to be too secretive they actually draw more attention to themselves yes yes when they just play normal and they honestly don't give it, it's all about your heart posture like if you think in your head that somehow a fast makes you this into this incredible person that nobody has ever seen or witness and you walk around as mr awesome and you're bragging about it and you're hoping like secretly nobody knows this but you know this people you're hoping somebody asks you if you're fasting then of course you have to deal with that with the lord you have because that is not a proper posture but if somebody asked you hey um are you fasting like like for example i was live streaming today and somebody asked that and they were genuinely wanted to know about the particular things that I do. And so like part, part of me wanted to say, no, this is private, but I'm like, man, but that's why I'm encouraging them. So, yes. you know, I used my example and stuff. So, and for me, it was not easy because yesterday I was still battling with an illness and I went, I had to go to the doctor yesterday uh, because of, you know, they found out that I had a um, viral infection, but, you know, it's already going away. So part of me was like, man, I, I don't think I could be fasting because of, you know, I'm battling with sickness. Plus I was taking some pills and on the empty stomach, but I don't know. I just felt in my heart. This is what the Lord called me to do. I need to Good. do that. I asked my doctor, I said, hey, can I take this on the empty stomach? She's like, yeah, no problem. And so I'm like, okay, well, that's a confirmation. And so, um, and that's it. And so it's it wasn't easy and so if if somebody asks me for that and I tell them that this is not me in my heart and God knows my heart God judges my heart in my heart I'm not waiting for the question hey so what are you doing what kind of a to me this stuff is just as regular as I woke up this morning very early to pray and if somebody asks me hey uh, did you spend time with the Lord today and how did that go I can tell them how did that went because I had the time with the Lord and so and some people I feel like they keep judging other people who sometimes mention fasting is because they actually don't fast themselves you better preach there's i'll say this jesus said when you fast not if you fast so fasting is part of the christian life it's not an extra credit extra biblical it's part of the christian life there's a parable i don't know where it's at i I was just reading it the other day basically and i'm i'm going to paraphrase it okay this is not word for word but basically jesus says listen if you have a servant And the servant just does what he's supposed to do. He just cleans where he's supposed to clean. If you go to work and your job is to build a fence and you build the fence, don't expect the master, your boss, your to call you and say, thank you so much for building that fence. Don't expect your master, Jesus says, to come and thank you and come and give you all these accolades. And then Jesus says, so don't expect when you're just doing the things I'm calling you to do this don't expect That's someone to so give you good. this pat on the back because we all walk That's around so like good. man god really owes me something and god's like i don't owe you anything it's a normal christian life to be praying it's the normal christian life to witness it's the normal christian life to fast it's the normal christian life to live holy so jesus says don't because the disciples they want extra credit who's better and he goes dude you're just doing what you're supposed to do so i would never expect 
my boss to call me every single day after work and say thank you so much for doing your job. Number one, I'm getting paid to do it. Number two, it's my job. I don't need anyone to thank me for it. So in the same sense, Jesus relates spiritual discipline. Like, I mean, we just, again, it's about, we just got to grow up and be like, okay, I don't need anyone to thank me. I don't need anyone to pat me on the back. I'm going to do this because God wants me to do this. Okay, let me ask you this. How can fasting become flip side legalistic? How does it become where it's now legalism, where we turn these spiritual matters that we're doing into routines that are no longer spiritual and they're legalistic? Do you see that with fasting? Uh, and if so, how do we prevent any, that? Anything can become legalistic. Um, if we think that fasting increases our worth to God, um, we are already treading on the legalism. Because legalism, mm. you know, anybody who does anything radical for Jesus can be perceived as a legalist. You know, people who abstain from alcohol, yes. people who are fasting, people who are praying, people who believe in holiness, actually a lot of times are being perceived as legalists. Those yep. of us who do ministry of deliverance, we are very heavy on holiness because yep. um, not only you know, without holiness, we cannot see God, but without holiness, we're going to see a lot of demons. And so we have like another layer of really pushing for holiness. And a lot of times we get perceived as legalists. Now, in my mind, a legalist is somebody who will exalt their good works as a way to get grace from God, mm. which we don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that we nope. get that from uh, fasting, prayer or anything or giving. And the other part where it could become legalist is when we force people to fast. I think That's that good. fasting is always done um, on a volunteer basis. And I think people need to be encouraged, taught biblical principles about fasting. When it comes to them fasting, how much, how often, I think that always needs to be left with people. As a pastor, as a leader, as a parent, you can't make people fast. That is wrong. That's good. That is not biblical. We don't see this anywhere Preach. in the Bible of God telling pastors to make people do some of these Christian disciplines, like even reading the Bible. We have to teach, we have to encourage, we have to wet their appetite, but we cannot force. Forced fasting is not fasting because what makes Good. fasting incredible is that you choose it. Otherwise, every kid that's starving right now is actually fasting, but there's no mm. spiritual benefit in that. And so, because it's forced, forced by the society, they don't have enough food. And so if your pastor ch forces you or makes it feel like, you know what, if you guys are not fasting, get out of my church and everything, then you're not in the church, you're in the cult and stuff. So because that, they're using it as a, as a fear uh, technique uh, against uh, Christians, we should encourage, but I don't believe that we should be uh, forcing that. And the other part of legalism is when you really begin to, when you fail at fasting and what you feel with it. For example, a lot of times people, everybody who's ever fasted probably have broken a fast before they expected it. And if you have feelings of, oh my goodness, I have sinned, I have abandoned God, I have, you know, like God in heaven just crossed off my name from the book of life, like that's a legalistic view. Yes. God doesn't see like that. If you ate a cracker on accident or honestly, you would just so exhausted and tired and you went and you ate a meal and then you resume the fast the next day like it's not a big deal i'm not saying not to value the importance of commitment i'm very huge on the commitment but at the same time you also have to give yourself grace because you're abstaining from food you're not abstaining from pornography drugs or something uh, immoral it, food is good uh, heaven will have food we will not be fasting in heaven praise god <laughs> and so um it will only be something that's on earth and so uh, that's what kind of my view of legalism is to not to be too hard on yourself when and, you know you fail and also not to be exalting of yourself when you do complete thinking that now your worth in God has increased awesome I love it okay let's go a couple more and then I'm gonna have you pray us out here so good so much good information here all right someone wants to start fasting they're here in the chat they've never fasted before new Christian or maybe old Christian maybe they never got through six hours of fasting how do we start Vlad how how do you recommend me starting I'm I'm First time. I'm here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready to I'm ready to knock King's stomach off his throne. I'm ready to see my feet in Jesus name. I'm tired of looking down at King's stomach. Uh what are some advice, some tips, something to expect? Give me something practical. 
Um, so I would first encourage that not to be afraid. Your body is wired for fasting. Think about it. Come when you on. eat breakfast, it's actually break fast. So you break that again. So your body is when you're sleeping, your body is fasting. Your body was designed to fast. Now we can argue was it designed to fast for a very long time but it was designed to fast nevertheless so you already have been fasting congratulations if you've been alive you already have been doing some fasting not by choice but by the virtue of sleeping so if you don't have fear about it and then you walk into it with faith now a 21 day might be very difficult for somebody who has never fasted but it's also not impossible. I would encourage that you prayerfully consider what kind of fast the Lord will have you do. Whether Good. it's every other day for 21 days or it's three days and then you know you take next three days off and then you do three days again and so for the beginners I would just say that you prayerfully consider. You consider also your job if you're a truck driver or if you are working at the place where you're not going to get food, for example, maybe you're a nurse and you're, you're gonna, your hands are going to start shaking and you're going to poke somebody with a needle. That's good. You kind of want to consider maybe doing something else or like eating once a day instead of not eating at all. And so if you are a nursing mom or if you are a pregnant, you want to abstain from fasting of food completely. It's not healthy. It's not recommended. Um, if you are a child, you Vlad, also say that one more time because somebody in the chat literally right before you said it said, hey, I'm going to I'm going to do a fast, but I'm breastfeeding. Say that one more time. You said if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, you should not be fasting food. You just reiterate, reiterate yeah, that for yeah. us. If you are pregnant or if you are fasting, uh, do not abs abstain completely from biblical fasting you can fast maybe chocolate or uh or coffee or soda which probably shouldn't be drinking soda anyway or tv <laughs> or something like that but you do not want to right now your season don't of starve life, your baby don't start yeah, your, yeah, your season of life you have another baby that depends on you yes and you don't you're not depriving yourself you're actually depriving another human being that depends on you and so it's very very crucial that you you leave the fasting part to your husband or to your yep. children or to other season of your life, but you don't do that. Also, if you're on a heavy medication, you want to either consult your doctor or not practice fasting, complete fasting on food. And if you are a child, if you are a child, um, you're highly discouraged to fast. Uh, you could fast maybe something like uh, not watching TV or something like that. When you are a child and you're underage, you want to not practice fasting. Now, I practiced fasting as a child from 13, but my parents were aware and I did one day, uh, 24 hours a week. And so as That's long good. as your parents are aware and they're blessing you, and if it's one day a week and they're supervising you, then that's completely fine. But don't, like I had this girl one time, got saved in our youth ministry, and she went I 14 days. She was like 13 years of age, went what? 14 days without food. Her parents called her church like, you guys are in a cult. And I was like, wow. I didn't even know she was fasting 40 days. Our, her, our whole church did a 21 day fast, but I kind of forgot to mention to the youth that, hey, uh, you want to kind of talk to your parents and stuff. So at the time we were radical, a lot of zeal and very little wisdom. And so, um, so the girl just took it seriously and started to fast for 14 days. So her parents came to church, like screamed and yelled at me and then yelled at me and stuff. So, and uh, so I- And understandably, her. understandably, right? Because you're at 100%. that age, I mean, your body's developing. Uh, and if you're yeah. that age and you don't eat, and this is, if you guys know anything about kids that have gone through like starvation or, or malnourished, your body literally doesn't grow during that period. So so if you yeah. if you're malnourished from like 13 to 15 you lose two years of growth and you don't gain it back so again for kids if you do a six hour eight hour awesome but don't be trying to do long fast because your your body literally needs food to develop so i'm glad you pointed that out vlad now vlad yeah. let me ask you again i'm just kind of going through some questions here that i'm getting in in the chat coconut water gatorade electrolytes what are your thoughts on like coconut water or um, sparkling water, or for example, what did someone just say here in the chat? Gatorade, right? They're trying to get these electrolytes, a little bit of sugar. What is your mm -hmm. opinion on that? If you're doing a no food fast, is that okay? Is that not okay? What do you think? So I don't, I don't practice that. I usually just drink water with electrolytes uh, okay. in it already. Is that like a powder uh, that you mix in? No, I, I buy them in Costco and it's oh, just gotcha. electrolytes. Okay electrolytes added. Um, so I do encourage people who do a water fast for 21 days to add into their water um, mineral salt. 
um, mineral salt uh, and they have it on Amazon you can just google mineral salt what it does is it helps to um, with your bones and helps with your joints a lot of times during fasting that sometime on the second week or third week you actually start experiencing extreme uh, weakness in your knees um, I've experienced this a few times and I was just wasn't sure why this is happening and so because you, you lack those electrolytes and that mineral salt that's gone it's no wonder why David says in Psalms that my knees are weak through fasting and wow. so I've never experienced that until actually one time I was on a prolonged fast and so the way they say to help alleviate that is to add a little bit of mineral salt and they actually call it fasting mineral salt on um, you can buy it on Amazon and so I usually start adding that like on the last week and just a little bit into my water it's like a little bit a little bit of powder and um, and that's about it but um, it, it is abstaining from food so you technically technically you can drink uh, you know juices but I say to people that there's a difference between a biblical fast and a juice fast because some people do this juice fast where honestly like they they grind a burger like <laughs> this, the, that was the, my next and, question and so go ahead and just segue said, segue in yeah one pastor said he said if it goes through the straw it's under the law <laughs> <laughs> but it also depends on how big your straw is yeah. <laughs> so, that's hilarious uh, my, my encouragement is honestly just just be honest with yourself if you're doing a juice fast and every day you're doing like three four juices like hey god bless you i'm i'm, I'm not here to judge uh you're abstaining from food technically and so but it is a little bit different because nowadays you can drink so much of those juices and actually they fill you up just fine yeah. and plus the problem with a lot of juices also is that your stomach actually doesn't go to sleep because mm. you constantly keep awaking it by giving it those calories and so and by giving it uh, those nutrients and so the goal is to keep the stomach asleep and so if King you keep stomach, adding all of to these, sleep man yeah if you keep putting all of these lock. sugars into your body through Gatorade and some other stuff then your stomach might be keep getting awakened so I just drink water That's with a really um, good electrolytes point. and and sometimes hot water maybe add like a little lemon um and stuff and so and if I get like I would go on a date with my wife and just get you know hot water with with lemon yeah. and that's it. I want to I want to say two words that I want everyone to write in the chat and then I'm going to explain the two words. Ready? God understands. Okay, I want everyone in the chat that's legalistic oh. to to write that down because I think Vlad we don't realize God understands. He's not legalistic. If if let me just example here. If you're 5 6 days in and you're like seeing black dots which is like a sign your sugar's low and you're barely able to walk and you're just really struggling if you go grab a Jamba Juice, now, of course, we're telling you don't be drinking three Jamba Juices a day. Don't be just eating, you know, a bunch of high calorie protein because that's not the point. But if you're like, hey, I'm seven days into my fast. I'm like weak. I have no sugar. I need some type of calories. I'm, I'm thin as it is. And you go get a Jamba Juice. You don't need to, you know, wheat for three days after. Just, hey, I drank a Jamba Juice. I'm moving on. I'm going to keep going on the fast. God understands. He's not going to be, he's, he's not holding a lightning bolt waiting to, to throw it 100%. at you. If you're breastfeeding, if you're pregnant, if you're on medication, if you're already super skinny and you get really shaky do like vlad said fast one day eat one day fast one day eat one day god completely understands so we want to make sure that we're not being being legalistic and we're not like you know i used to think like i gotta wait till 1201 it's like 11 50 i'm like 10 more minutes and then god will let me eat but then you know what i realized vlad i'm like wait is god in pacific time is god in eastern standard time is god in like uh you know south africa time because i'm over here waiting 10 more minutes and god so these are things I that would, i learned I, I always found a loophole i would always end fasting when i felt like ending fasting and i would say well it's 12 o'clock somewhere somewhere yeah so I, I think the idea is like man god understands we don't want to create this legalistic god if oh, you god. need to do it then do it but but i wanted to highlight a point you made which is super super good my mom actually just asked about that again is like not your stomach hibernates in, in essence right and of course these are not i'm not using proper medical terms but when you you're not eating for like seven days or eight days or even five days your stomach it stops doing the contraction it stops constantly growling it stops it's like all right you're, this dude's not feeding me so i'm just gonna shut down here and go to sleep so if you're eating these sugary drinks or these uh jamba juices or you're blending up your in and out like you know trying to get it through a thick straw then you are waking up your stomach constantly you're basically you're waking up king's stomach and you were trying to yeah. put King's stomach in a headlock, mm. knock him out and put him to sleep. So don't keep waking him up. And that might help some of you that are like, I keep resetting the three day cycle, that three day struggle, yeah. which you get, my next question actually was, I'm, it's like, man, there's people in the chat saying, I'm having a hard time getting past the first few days. 
Like, what are maybe something I can do to just try to get past? Is there any strategy or any tip? Again, we know these are no secrets. You know, we're not giving any any secret society information here. But is there any tips that you can give us maybe for the for those that are like, I'm just really struggling the first few days? So this is what helped me. Number one is that I made up my mind that I will go to the end. Come on. So, that, so that's how I usually go on a prolonged fast. I don't ask my body what it wants, what it feels like doing it. I don't ask my emotions how I feel. Come on. So I ask the Lord what He wants me to do. Once the Lord gives me a clear instruction, then I make up my mind and everything has to fall into place. Now, is it easy? Absolutely not. Does my body throw a fit? Absolutely. Does my soul throw a fit? Absolutely. Mm. But at the end of the day, I made up my mind. And so, and usually when you do like a 21 day fast, then, then you just, you just kind of buckled in and waiting to pass through the first few days. Um, because you don't see the end at all. So like the, the end is not even there. Okay. So like first three days doesn't, it's a piece of cake. You're like, I just need to get through first few days. And after that, you still don't see the end at all until about 19th day, 18th day that you start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And that's when you start getting these ideas. Oh, I already got a breakthrough. I think uh, the Lord already has done the work that he needed to do in my life during this fast. You know, I'm just gonna not be a legalist and I'm gonna finish earlier. And so, um, and with that, I've learned to train myself to be a finisher, not to be just a quitter. My Good. Savior, when He died on the cross, He didn't say, I quit. He said, I Come it on. is finished. Come on. Jesus is the author and the finisher of faith. And so I always tell people not to be legalistic about it, but also don't be so loose about your fast that you never finish anything in your life. And it's not only the fasting you never finish, you don't finish school. Um, you don't finish writing a book, Come you on. don't finish writing anything, you start and you don't finish. And so one of the things that translates into my life in other areas of my life is when I finish a fast is I developed a muscle in my spiritual arsenal or my spiritual um, metabolism of if I start something then I develop the consistency, the persistence, the commitment to finish it. I love and so, that. And it's the ones that finish it that see the reward. So I always uh, say start with the finish in mind by making up your mind. Now this doesn't mean that if you fall ill or anything of that sort that you know you can't you know get a drink or uh, break a fast and resume again. But in my mind personally I don't give myself permission for that. And so uh, I, when I was fasting a 40 day fast, I told my wife that um, I said, I am really sorry for what I'm about to say, but I will die wow. before I will quit the fast. And I said, they'll carry me on the stretcher and I will not put food into my mouth until I complete this fast because I felt so strongly like I could take a bullet if you put a gun right in front of me that this is what the Lord called me to do and I had to do that. And so there was that conviction. So it didn't matter if a pastor from Ukraine sat for an hour and tried to talk me out of it. Like that, that stuff did not matter or a nice burger at the business class in um, on a flight to turkey. Ukraine. Because of, the yeah, moist, because juicy turkey. Yeah, Jer Jersey, uh, juicy turkey and stuff. So, so that's what I would kind of encourage to start, make up your mind right away. The Bible says about Daniel, about his 21 day of mourning, when the angel came and he said, when you made up your mind to see God, I was dispatched. That's, I'm paraphrasing it. Wow. So God didn't come when he finished 21 day fast. The moment he made up his mind, something just happened. So if you're struggling always the first three days, um, I'm telling you one thing is that you can experience breakthrough on the other side, but just make up your mind and just stick through those difficult first few days, get some rest, um, drink a lot of water and uh, watch some more messages on fasting because if you're listening to a sermons where pastor describes his latest trip to Chick-fil-A, uh, you know, <laughs> that's not going to encourage your fasting. Delete so your listen. DoorDash. Delete the DoorDash yeah. app while yeah, you're fasting. Your pastor and stuff. So just listen to something. I mean, Miles Monroe, Derek Prince, there's quite a few guys. Jensen Franklin has quite a few messages online. Um, I have messages online about fasting. I actually like to listen to stuff that's more like sacrificial or things like about dying to yourself, especially when I'm fasting, because it, it really just kind of reinforces what I'm feeling. Um, um, and it's really good. That's so good. I love that. Okay. Now somebody was asking, what if I do a sexual fast? Now we're not going to go deep into this because there's a lot of kids watching, but I know that this is something that we've talked about in the past. There is 
there is a type of fast, but that's not the fast we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, because there's some wives in the chat that are like, oh, I've been fasting. Okay, we're not talking about fasting from intimacy, but I just I do want to give the verse for context. It's uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 5. It says, do not deprive one another. So that's very important to note. Except, mm -hmm. so there's only one exception to depriving a spouse. Ex and again, this is only in marriage. So if you're dating, you shouldn't even be thinking about this. Except perhaps by agreement for a limited time. So we know now... There's one exception, it needs to be agreement, so it's not just the wife wanting to do it or the husband wanting to do it. It's only for a limited time, and this is for what the reason is, Paul says, that you might devote yourselves to prayer. Then, come back together again, so that Satan might not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So there is some type of, I wouldn't go as far, Vlad, maybe I'm wrong, as a saying this is a sexual fast here, and like we need to do this as, you know, as a married couple, but if God does say, hey, for a small time, separate and separate sexually i mean and devote yourselves to prayer come right back together so that satan doesn't tempt you there is a type of sexual fast but it's not something i would create a doctrine out of now listen i have four kids so you already know i'm not making a doctrine out of sexual fasting here but i would say there is some people in the chat earlier that were saying oh yeah i'm gonna do a sexual fast and and specifically a couple ladies in the chat so uh, what are your thoughts on that vlad people that come to you and say i don't know if i'm gonna do food i'm gonna do a sexual fast um so i know it's, it's a little sticky here I think if you are single, yes, uh, you should abstain from. Um, uh, well, you should always be fasting all the time, twenty four. <laughs> I think Paul's talking to get, married couples here. Yeah, until you get married. Um, if you are married, though, um, it's not healthy. First of all, Isaiah read a verse. The Bible does not um, in there talk about fasting in terms of abstinence uh, abstaining from sex how i Good. see that verse i could be wrong how i see that verse is that when i leave out of town for three days or sometimes um, usually i try not to go for more than three days um, to spend time with god and so it's something that i started to develop last year of leaving uh, getting a cabin and just turning off my phone and just being there for three days and so i'm not physically with my wife i'm not intimate with my wife and so um and then i come back you know and i resume my normal duties including you know being a husband to my wife and so that's kind of how i see that um when it comes to prayer that's um, good if that's intimacy interesting with your wife is distracting your prayer life like that's what I'm know. saying. At what point does that even happen? I mean, yeah, I, I wonder if like you have some other problems there that doesn't because typically that's that's a holy thing. That's not a dirty thing. Exactly. That's not a that's not a some kind of a wrong thing. Now, when it comes to fasting, though, when you fast, um, what I found out is that a lot of times you are physically weaker. Um, your desires, urges are way weaker so people yes. who's like hey so when you do a 21 day fast that you still have you know physical intimacy with your wife it's not that the bible doesn't allow that it's just a lot of times you're physically mm. just not there because your, your physical desires and a lot of other stuff they're just not necessarily on, on the same level as they were when you were not fasting and so uh, now it could happen but sometimes it's not possible just because you're just physically not necessarily yeah 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 and your hormones are out of balance right your testosterone all that technical yeah. stuff is out of balance yeah. so there's not that there's not that drive there but again yes. guys remember uh for the ladies or the men i don't want to just say just ladies but for the men as well don't use this verse as a way of depriving one another because the the verse starts yeah. with do not deprive one another paul's Come like on. hey I already, I already know y'all are going to try to use what i'm about to say to deprive each other so he says uh -huh. okay there's an agreement it's a limited time so it's not mm -hmm. a 21 day it's a limited yeah. time and then he says you're days. devoting yourselves to prayer then you're yeah it's not a 40 day yeah. and then you're coming and, back together again. like if i can add to that isaiah yeah, like yeah, yeah. When, when i was doing a a uh, the, the long one um you know my wife she was like oh you know she's gonna sacrifice because we we go on on weekly date nights and stuff so and i told her i said no i'm like we will go to weekly date and she's like no i'll sacrifice them because i don't want to i don't want i don't want you to suffer i was like no i was like i'm not gonna suffer don't worry i was like i suffered at the on the plane on the for business class thing and i was like <laughs> that was the suffering i was like everything else is not going to be the same and so and i really honestly i really felt that hey if god is making me more like him this is also one of my way of serving my wife and if my wife wants to go Good. have food i'm gonna go with her just you know drink water and pretend like i'm eating and stuff yeah. and just have a more conversation turn off my phone and stuff so because you know if i'm on my phone instead of eating then that's also not being a good husband so i would just 
really encourage you, especially if you're a wife and you're fasting, you know, this is not a moment to stop being a wife. This yes, is not a moment good. to stop being your mother and say, hey, I'm not going to feed my children. Why? Because I'm fasting. Well, that's not, the Bible doesn't call us to that kind of a fast. We should not stop doing what we need to do with our duties are in the house and in our marriage to our spouses. So good. Okay. Last thing I'm going to ask you, Vlad, and then I'm going to have you pray for us. And then we're going to direct you guys also to the book and the challenge. And then I'll hang out for a bit after as well. Um, and I see Vlad's wife and my wife in the chat saying, amen. Amen. Both of them are in the chat right now. So praise the Lord for you guys both. Last question I want to ask you. I think this is a perfect one to wrap everything up. How do we end the fast? I did a 21 day fast. I did a seven day fast. And I'm, I'm hypothetically, I did a 40 day or I did a five day or a three day Am I in line? Am I at Mountain Mike's trying to get a large pizza? Am I trying to get an in and out drive through? Like, is there a way I should break it? Because that's one thing keep, people keep asking. How do I break my fast? This is very important. I um, actually have a mutual, well, a, a pastor I know had a friend who had a 40 day fast, literally ate in and out and died after. And that's actually happened several times. Physically, really? he died. Yeah, yeah, after a 40 day fast. A, a Korean pastor in Southern California. But that's not only one story. There's actually several stories I've heard of that. That's oh. just someone I know personally. And his his friend actually passed away. He went to literally went to In-N-Out after a 40 day water only and ate, I don't know how much he ate, but he ate enough and it put his body into shock and it actually literally killed him. So I know, again, I'm not trying to scare anybody. If you, you do a three day fast, you're not going to die if you oh, eat In-N-Out. Because that's very dangerous. Yeah. 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 So we do need to be careful. I had a friend that did, I think he did a 11 days fat. He fasted for 11 days and he actually ate some grapes and his body went into shock. Apparently, like if you eat too much fructose sugar, like after 11 days of not eating, something happened, but he went into shock and was very sick and stuff. So talk to us a little bit about coming off of a fast. What are the preparations and how do we get back to normal eating? Um, so when breaking a fast of 10 days or more, the breaking period should be extended one day for every four days of fasting. So let me say that again. If you're breaking a fast of 10 days or more, the break-in period should be extended one day for every four days of fasting. So if you're fasting eight days, your coming out of a fast should be at least two days. If you're fasting 21 days on water, you should take at least three days to come out of it. If it's a 40-day fast, then you should take seven days to come out of it. One of the biggest mistakes that I believe both spiritually and it could damage us physically but spiritually in the sense that God is looking if we are filling ourselves and we allow those urges and those desires quickly you know that that, that shows that we didn't practice self-discipline we didn't learn the lesson that we needed to learn and so it takes a lot of self-discipline to come out of a fast slowly and so the rule I mean there's really only just one main rule is that you should never break the fast with eating a normal meal that's which good. means you know Somebody write animal that down. proteins, bread, sh bread, sugar, dairy, processed foods. Um, so you should never break a fast with longer fast with eating a normal meal. But honestly, even two day fast, if you're just going yep. straight for the steak, um, you will create serious discomfort, stomach cramps, uh, nausea, weakness. You will nul nullify the physical benefits of fasting. It will cause serious irreversible complications and as Isaiah mentioned in some extreme cases it will cause physical death. I remember I was fasting Isaiah once uh, seven days uh, and afterwards my, my mom she's an incredible cook and um, and she made it wasn't we were not all fasting it was just I was just fasting so she made a cinnamon rolls a homemade cinnamon rolls oh, and man, so there was like them. 12 <laughs> 12 of them and um, 12 it was disciples. a seven days so I'm like I ate, you know, just a little bit of soup. And after that, you know, I started eyeing those cinnamon rolls. And so I, I told myself, just one. <laughs> and uh, so after seven cinnamon rolls. Oh, no. Um, I was rushed quickly to the bathroom. You ate seven um, of the disciples right there? <laughs> yeah. And then I spent 40 minutes. I mean, I was 40 minutes sitting on the toilet. I was crying mm. like like I didn't cry during fasting. I promised to God that I will never do it again. I mean, I, I made promises. I don't even know what I was saying there. I was like, God, just save me, spare me. And I felt like, you know, of course, 
you know, God wasn't causing this. Cinnamon rolls were doing this to me yeah. and stuff. So because it was lack of self-control, that gluttony, you know, and the Lord's really rebuked me. And he said, he said, you're pretty much undoing everything you've done with your fast. You're showing that you're obsessed with food, that, mm. you know, self-control is not really developed in your life and stuff. So kind of repented. And after that, I've really been approaching this extremely carefully uh, about exiting the fast because I don't want to develop stomach ulcers or any other stuff and so um, one of the things that I do is of course anything that's water-based broths are good. Oh yeah give us some examples the chat is asking give us some some examples of what you would eat. So the, the thing that I do is I use a cooked uh, tomato so I cook a tomato pretty much in water and uh, I drink the water and then I eat that cooked tomato um, so bone broth is also another one um, but again like if you fast for 21 days on water you want to like you don't just eat like chicken noodle soup tomatoes yeah um so bone broth um steamed vegetables could be a little bit later not right away um adding tofu to broths help to add substance and it's less solid than the potato or rice in the soups um and so but pretty much you want to avoid anything that's solid for days um, and at specifically meat for at least um, a week if you're going on a 21 day or a 40 day water fast. Some juices are good, but you have to watch because some juices can actually give you, um, uh, cause you troubles as well. So you, you got a, a, you know, soft, sweet fruit like melon and watermelon and papaya and mango are good to follow after water based broths. But pretty much another thing that I would give an advice on is that if you know somebody who finished the 21 day fast quickly and they exited quickly, please don't follow that person's advice or don't follow <laughs> that on. person's example. That's really good. Yeah, really good. You know, like, well, my friend, yeah, but hey, you're not your friend. So I would I would not yeah. be taking advice from your friend that went to in and out right after their fast. And that and it is funny and laughable, but it is the it is the temptation. Like you it's what you want to do. You're like, I want to go eat something fast food, something good, something, you know, greasy, whatever. It's like you 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 haven't ate for so many days. But again, you mm -hmm. guys I would say as much discipline as you use in the fast, use at the end of the fast. Don't rush through the finish line and fall over five steps before you finish. You know, like Vlad said, it might not be the wrath of God. It might be high fructose corn syrup that's really coming at you from you eating all yeah. the processed stuff. So Vlad, oh, I'm going to guys stay on here because I'm going to have Vlad pray for us. But before you pray for us, tell me where we can get your book. I know you did in the beginning, but there's now 3,600 people on here. And then tell me about where we can do your fasting challenge. So how do I get your book? Again, guys, we only covered, well, we didn't cover hardly any of the book. We covered maybe just like two small portions, but there's much more in the book that's going to help you. Please don't sit back and say, I need help. I don't know what to do. We're bringing you guys this content. Vlad's written a book for you. So show him the book, Vlad, talk about it, and then tell us how to do the challenge or where to go. Um, so guys, the, the book is called Fast Forward. Um, the subtitle is Accelerating Your Spiritual Life Through Fasting. It's actually a 21-day uh, devotional. It has parts about the ABCs of fasting, how to begin fasting. Um, it has um, each day an encouragement. So like 21 chapters, but they're designed to be like a 21-day fasting. You don't have to. Some read them all in one setting. And um, it has personal stories of mine. It has also encouragement, spiritual encouragement to fast. It also has scriptures, prayers, as well as things to reflect on and health um, uh, like a health uh, tips on what's happening to your body while you're fasting. You can get it on Amazon. Um, it's available anywhere books are sold. You can get it on Amazon as a Kindle. I have a hardcover. They are expensive. Partially is because I did not know how much it costs to print Looks colors. Nice. And so, but yeah, they look a lot nicer. So they're like, they're, they're, they're expensive though. And so most of the Amazon eats most of the fee anyway. So, but the paperback is less expensive. It's black and white. And then there's an audible version. And actually the guy that did the audio for Michael Heiser's books, uh, he did the audio for, for this book. And so audible version is um, in it as well. And so if you cannot afford it, um, you can go on my website, pastorvlad.org and download the book there. It will be available in Spanish and Russian very soon, here in a few weeks. Um, and we have a reading plan that you can uh, use a Europe version reading plan together with your friends on version Bible app. Just go to fast forward, look for on it, fast forward. Now, we are a part of a fast forward challenge right now. It's from January 9th to January 29th of 2023. 
So if you're re-watching this way later, you probably have missed it. But if you're watching it within the time of January 9th through 29th... Which we are I live wanna, right now. By the way, everyone, yeah. people ask, are you guys live? Literally, it says yeah. live above, but it's I'm okay, the, I'm like live. already thinking about the re-watching and yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, so, no, no, no. Yeah, uh, it started yeah, yesterday, we, correct? Yeah, we are live. So, yeah, it started yesterday. So everyone is welcome. If you still have not decided and you watch this right now and you decided that, hey, I want to be a part of this. I want to do something about this fast. Uh, you know, I want to apply some kind of a way of fasting. I want to invite you to just go to pastorvlad.org forward slash challenge and sign up. You will right away get the Facebook link and you starting tomorrow, you're going to start receiving um, email updates and then 9 a.m. Pacific time, Monday through Saturday, um, I live stream each day, kind of share a little insight, share what's happening to your body, provide encouragement, answer some questions and then we offer also prayer. So every day he's going live at 9 a.m. So that means you're dropping the kids off at school. You could play it in the car. You're driving to work. You could play it right there. You're getting up, getting yeah. ready, put on some earphones, listen to his stream. He's giving advice. He's praying for people. He's teaching you guys about fasting. That's a huge commitment to go live every single day. And you said you're doing that 21 days? Yeah, 21 days. That that that's the plan, Isaiah. We'll we'll uh, So he's he's working ask through 21 me, ask me days. Again after 21 days. That's a yeah, that's a lot of work there. You know, I'm trying to pass him by the way, guys and subs. I think we're caught, I'm even we're even right now, but I, you're going to blow right past me. So, hey guys, by the way, I'm going live every day at 8 a.m. No, I'm just kidding. Um make sure you guys get in these lives with Vlad. Vlad Amazing night. We did. We ended up going an hour and forty minutes. We we're gonna go an hour, but who cares? I mean, we're not paying to be live, so as long as you don't care, I don't care. Do us a favor, pray right. for us, and then I'll stay. I'll get you off, and I'll stay on and read the donations and all that. But just pray us out here when it comes mm -hmm. to fasting. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for my friend Isaiah for giving me the opportunity to speak on this topic. Lord, I thank you for hundreds and thousands and eleven thousand people as of yesterday that signed up for this challenge, people who have said yes to disconnecting from the world and connecting with you. And Lord, I pray that those who are maybe on the fence and are facing certain challenges in their life and they really need to have that, really this year it has to be different. They, they can't afford to live their life the same the way they lived every single year. And something has to be different, Lord. And they feel this quickening in their heart right now that what has to change is the foundation. What they do first has to change and they have to give this month to your hands, God. Cut away, put away the food and begin to focus on your word, focus on prayer, focus on repentance, focus on, on drawing closer to you. Lord, I pray to those people that you will just bring confirmation right now, Lord. I pray that you will stir their heart. I pray that you will lead them. The same way, Holy Spirit, you let Jesus into the wilderness to fast, that you will lead them. That this will not be like a, any other fast they've ever done before. That this will be supernatural. That this will be divine. And there will be a grace of God on it, Lord. That you will just richly bless them, God. That you will strengthen their faith, God. That you will enlarge their territory, God. May the fruit from this commitment and this fast, God, be... May they see see the fruit throughout this whole year and even years after Lord in Jesus mighty name I ask you for you to speak I ask you for you to strengthen and I ask you for you to guide us Lord and Lord I ask you for those that are facing family problems financial problems and who are facing health problems as they are beginning to move in fasting Lord may this kind may these stubborn demons may these stubborn problems may these stubborn viruses and bacteria in our life Lord may they die May they, Lord God, evaporate. May they, Lord God, be cast out. May they be broken down, Lord. May we experience perpetual victory in the valley. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. What an amazing night. Guys, make sure you get the book. I'll sign you off here, Vlad, and I'll stay on and talk to them Thank and you, stuff like that. Thanks so much, bro, for being on tonight. Really appreciate you. Thank you. All right, man. Good night. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, so into this broadcast, I'm going to send Vlad a love offering regardless of what comes in, but help me by sewing into the broadcast so that I can make sure that I get him something. I do, I do value his time tremendously. He just got back from Romania literally last week. He's been sick and here he is with us spending an hour and 45 minutes. And by the way, none of the guests ever ask for anything, but I want to bless them. So if you are blessed tonight, you can scan the QR code right there on screen and give on my website monthly or one time, doesn't matter. You can give on all these links for all of you that say, where do I give all these links down below here? Or, or you can give on the PayPal linked in the comments, or you can give directly to Vlad. 
Like, it doesn't matter. Either way, I'm going to sow the same into him, whether you give to him or you give to my ministry. But we do appreciate it. We only are able to do this because of you guys. And very exciting announcement, guys. Tomorrow, we will officially... Let's get some ones in the chat. Uh, some sh some amens in the chat. We will start building our new studio tomorrow. Yes, if you didn't know, we're building a brand new studio. Starting tomorrow, we'll be moving into it. All of the equipment. Somebody had purchased about $30,000 worth of equipment. We've spent about total, we're almost at 50,000 on everything, furniture, lights, everything. It's a legit studio. We're very excited. This studio will still be here. I will still be streaming with these cameras in this studio, but we will be also doing a sit down podcast, brand new type of thing with uh, amazing, it's just gonna be amazing. My wife will be in more streams. My family will be in more streams. It'll be couches where we're gonna sit down and talk. It'll be more casual than this, but we'll still be doing this. And I'll be able to get some of the Demon Slayers in person. Type one if you wanna see the Demon Slayers in person together. That's gonna be exciting. So yeah, tomorrow we start building that. Stay tuned with what God is doing. If you're not subbed to my channel, subscribe. If you're not subbed to Vlad's channel, make sure that you subscribe. I'll be live again Friday. I have some fun ideas on Friday. I'm gonna do an Ask Me Anything, and then I have some, we're just gonna have some fun Friday night and hang out, have some community time on my stream, do some fun stuff. And uh, it'll be a good time this Friday night. We'll be live at six o'clock. Vlad's live every morning at 9 a.m. So go ahead and give. I'm going to give you guys a minute to load into the donations. Awesome, awesome night. Our internet stayed on. Praise the Lord. Everything went smooth. You always got to thank God when things go smooth. You always, you always have to thank God when the internet doesn't go out. The power doesn't go out. So if you're still listening on Spotify, IsaiahSaldivar.com slash partner if you want to give. If you're watching live, which obviously if you're looking at me right now, hello, we're live, okay? Then please do it there. Now, for those of you that keep spamming, can I eat crickets or locusts and fast? Uh, no, it's it's eating if you're eating locusts, which I don't know if you're joking I, You said you weren't joking then you're still eating so no and then those of you that were saying can I drink holy water? Uh, I'm pretty sure you're just trolling, but yeah, you can definitely if you're eating locusts I wouldn't recommend it, but it's still eating so I don't know if that's like a workaround You thought you got the John the Baptist fast the John the Baptist workaround But if you're eating locusts, you're still eating and I wouldn't recommend eating locusts honestly though, but there you go uh, Isaiah, is your gain on your interface slightly high? Audio sounds a tad harsh. It is actually. It is because my voice is gone. Let me turn it down a little bit. I'm glad you said that. Is that a little bit better? Is that better? We got some audio people in the house. I'm the same way. If I'm listening to a stream and I'm like, oh, it sounds rough, uh, I'll text my friends. Hey, man, your gain was too high. But yeah, my my voice was gone, so I turned up my gain to compensate because I, I, I literally have no voice. Okay. Batman voice. Where's the flannel? I wore flannel last night. Maybe I'll wear flannel Friday. We'll see. Maybe it'll be. Maybe we'll make it flannel Friday. Who knows? You know, I'm a, I'm a cheesy. Uh, I'm a cheesy dad. So you know, gotta have the dad jokes. The flannel Fridays. Sorry, bro. I had to. It's all good, Matthew. I love it, bro. I'm a nerd. I I enjoy the nerd comments. So yeah, I was definitely peeking out my mic there, compensating. Okay, Warren and Donna. Thank you so much. They said thank you. Very educational. Thank you, Warren and Donna. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Anonymous. Love the fasting topic. Thank you both for all the hard work and dedication. May you be blessed with the offering. Thank you, Anonymous. Rosie Ramos, so thanks for this needed help getting this back in the right hands in God's eyes. God bless you. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you. Okay, if you guys want to give, go ahead and give. You can also give on my Venmo. If you could afford to give, then so. There's 3,300 people on right now. And yeah, our, our average is uh, our average giving amount or like amount of people that give is usually like 30 to 40 on these size streams so if 30 to 40 people are giving and there's 3300 watching that's like less than one percent so I, we can do it we can do this whitney nyland said thanks Isaiah and vlad always good to see you both together thank you whitney and nyland appreciate you uh vlad also has his giving links right there on his youtube channel so you can partner with him you can give to his ministry as well again like i said all of us guys we don't really care about the financial side of it. We, whether you give to there, give to there, whoever's page, we're not, you know, we're not like that. I did order for those of you that are asking, yes, this is my merch site. You can get it on YouTube. And this is actually a fresh shirt. I just reordered because my old one got nuked in the dryer, but yes. One of my favorite designs says demons fear me revival lifestyle. This is on the website. So yeah, that's a fresh one there. Fresh off the press, fresh off the press. My other one, got nuked I accidentally um put it in the pile that goes in the dryer so it probably fits my two-year-old now but yeah the merch is linked for those of you that are asking so no juicing for biblical fast if you have no health issues and you're a grown adult uh you can juice but what we're saying is don't just drink juice the whole time 
But it's okay to drink some juice once in a while. Just use discretion. Don Bell. So thank you, Isaiah and Vlad, for everything you've done. Thank you, Don Bell. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Isaiah, can you fast with locusts on live? I don't know what that means, but you should not be eating locusts. Okay, we're not in the book of Matthew. You do not be need to eat. You do not need to be eating locusts. How do I donate graphic designs for the ministry? Um, how about message me on Instagram? Message me on Instagram. And then I could get some of those graphic designs. I have a certain designer that does like a certain style, so I don't know that I would use them for sure, but yes. Yeah, no one will respond to me. Alex, what did you say? I'm, I'm, I'm reading my chat and Vlad's chat right now. And there's uh, 2,700 people in here. So I'm trying to get to everybody. But go ahead and retype it, Alex, and I'll look for it here. I'm breastfeeding, but I want to fast. I would wait till you're done breastfeeding because your body needs all the calories and nutrients you can get. So do not... Yeah, I don't know what, Rallis. Why is everyone obsessed tonight with uh, with locusts? I don't know what's going on here. I don't know if you guys are trolling or you're being serious. But why, why are you guys even buying locusts at? Alex, I don't know what you said. You said I've been praying and praying, but I, I don't know what you said. I like your background. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate you. Melissa, I don't know what you're talking about. You keep saying, can you fast on live on live with eating locusts? I don't know what you're talking about. What does work out your salvation mean? I have a video on that maple leaves. I can't go into a full de definition uh, explanation right now. John the Baptist ate locusts. Yes, he did. But that was uh, definitely in different times. You don't need to eat locusts now. What about the Daniel fast? We talked about that in the earlier. If you want to rewind, we're almost done anyways. That's not a biblical fast. The Daniel fast is not a biblical fast. The, in fact, the word Daniel fast is not in the Bible. If everyone gets $5, that'll be $17,000. That, yeah, that's insane. But uh, most people don't, don't give to the, to the live streams, which is, like I said, if you can't afford it, don't feel obligated. But if you can, so into what God is doing because we don't charge for our content. So the way we get, we survive is by people giving. What about kids fasting? I wouldn't recommend kids fasting because they need nutrients for their body to grow and you they can get stunted in their growth if they're not eating. But maybe like a one day would be okay, but just don't make it a, a long fast. Okay, I'm not going to talk about locusts anymore. I'm, I'm tired of talking about it and reading about it. I'm tired of reading locust comments. The bobblehead needs a long sleeve. Yes, he does. Yeah, I learned a lot of new terms last night. I learned, uh, you know, a lot of new terms in the stream. Um, Friday's going to be fun. We're going to do like an Ask Me Anything, but we're also going to do some fun stuff after stream that I thought about. Maybe it'll be fun. Maybe it won't. We'll see. But we're going to try it out. So be here Friday at 6 o'clock if you want to be a part of that. Bring you some Christian entertainment. Anonymous, thank you. Said fr from my son Marcus. Thank you so much, Marcus. I don't have a cash app, but Vlad does. It's on his YouTube. I don't have a cash app. I have Zelle, PayPal, Venmo, and website. The website's really easy to give on as well. Yeah, guys, I'm trying to read all the comments. And if you're spamming, can I eat locusts over and over when I've already said you should not be eating locusts, then I don't have to tell you. I mean, listen, if you like locusts, do whatever makes you happy, but I just wouldn't recommend eating locusts. Bro, we made Isaiah mad. No, you didn't make me mad at all, Crystal. You did not make me mad. I just have literally read 50 comments about locusts. So I'm trying to read, uh, you know, real comments. And uh, you guys keep spamming, asking, can you eat locusts? Can we, uh, did you raise all the amount needed for the studio? Yes. Originally, it was about $30,000. It was actually like 32,000. Someone sent in 30,000. We did not do a GoFundMe. And then we ended up, spending about 12 i think it was 12 or 13,000 for all the furniture and then in like another 5 to 10,000 anonymous or uh you like other costs so yes but the money's all been raised all the money's good it's all in and uh again thank you to the person that sent in $30,000 we didn't have to do a gofundme that was really good you guys already know everything you do you think it's going to be one amount and it ends up being way more so that's it's like with anything it's like with anything i mean the cameras that we bought they were for like 9,000 each with lenses or that's lenses included. The lights are $1,000 each. You know, the computer was $2,000. The TV for the setup was a thousand. 
The monitor was 500. I mean, everything just adds up crazy fast. You can get to like 30, 40, 50,000 pretty quick. Are you going to be at Fresh Start in Arizona on the 22nd? No, Calio. I will be at Without Walls Church in Mesa, Arizona on the 22nd. Is it still raining in California? Yes. Yes, this is how it looks. Well, actually, it's not raining right now, but we had a crazy storm last night. And in three in the morning, the Amber Alert tornado warning in your area was bl blurring or what is it called? Beeping loud and woke everybody up. And all of us were up at four in the morning because it was a tornado warning. And everybody in our area was posting pictures of them in their bathtub with their kids. I was like, I'm not jumping in the bathtub with the kids uh, to try to hide from a tornado unless there's a real tornado. And there was no tornado. But the weather's been crazy. Pray for people because I think 15 people have died so far in the floods. And there, there's legitimate, legitimate flooding happening. Like people are losing their houses and a lot of other stuff. So it's very sad. Fortunately, where I'm at specifically, I'm not really in danger of a flood, but there's a lot of flooding in my area in the streets and all, all the stuff like that. And we're from California. So we're not built for the tornadoes. We're not built for um, flooding our streets. Everything, everything is the infrastructure is not designed for flooding and adverse weather. So the rare time I've been living here for since I was, well, I've, I was born in California, but I've been living in the area. I'm in the central Valley since I was eight years old. So like how many years is that a lot? And uh, I've never seen anything like this type of storms before. Maybe one other time where we had tornadoes here, but yeah, it's very rare. Do you got the light skin stare? No, I don't. I don't. I learned what the light skin stare is and I don't have it. Gum keeps your stomach awake. Uh, yeah, I don't think gum's going to help. Melanie Edwards, thank you so much for the donation. I'm just going to wait for a couple more donations to load through, guys. And then we will we'll, we'll probably jump off here. We're five minutes from two hours. We'll be live Friday as well. But I'm excited. Tomorrow and Thursday, we're getting ready. We're putting stuff in the studio. I'm not going to travel for February because I want to work on the studio. The goal. Let me tell you guys the goal. What's today? I think we can do it. The goal is to have the studio done by the... Tw week uh, 26 27th January but I wanted to, I want to get it done ASAP the sooner the better so there's a lot of work to be done it's gonna be a good time and we're not there's no professionals I'm <laughs> me and my brother are the professionals that are doing the studio so I've we're building it ourselves it's not it's not you know what I mean we don't have any crazy team coming in to, to build it for us we're just doing it Another spammer. Yeah, don't spam or you'll get hit by the ban hammer. I've never fasted in my life. How many days should I start? Start with one to three days. One to three days. I don't have a Texas date as of right now. Do you have tornadoes in California or no? Very rarely, Michael. In all my time, I lived in this area for, what? I don't know, 20 plus years. 24 years, 23 years I've lived in this Central Valley and we, I've, we've had tornadoes one time since I could remember in 23 years. So one time in 23 years is pretty rare. And it snowed twice in 23 years where, where I'm at. So yeah, tornado warnings, this never happens. We're, we're having historic flooding, uh, more rain than we've had since the 1800s in a, in a consecutive period. So yeah, very, very sad people that have gotten flooded and everything like that. So Maple, okay, here's the deal on the merch. You said, can you lower the shipping cost? The merch is a third party company that prints on demand. So you guys order, they print it, they ship it, and they send me a cut of whatever it is, a small cut. And uh, the cost, you guys don't believe this because we're all used to free shipping on Amazon Prime. I used to think, why are someone charging me $5 to ship a t-shirt? I used to ship from my living room, 2017, 18 and 19, I literally had a full on merch operation in my living room. I was shipping out shirts by my, me and my wife were literally shipping out hundreds of shirts. I was, had a friend printing down the street and I'd bring them to my house. I did it all by hand by myself. Okay. Me and my wife doing all the shirts. And I was like, Oh, Amazon, everyone gets free shipping. I started shipping shirts out. I'm telling y'all shipping is so expensive. I was getting charged from the USPS with a commercial account, nine to $12 for one t-shirt. Nine to twelve dollars for one t-shirt to ship. So this company charges like what five or six dollars a shirt, which it sounds insane, but shipping's insane. Not only that, shipping's insane, but cost of goods is insane. 
So you think like, oh, you know, the shirts are $30 or $25. That's so much money. And it is a lot of money, but the cut, the margins are so tiny. I'm barely making anything from that. It's just to give you guys a chance to wear Christian clothing and put your faith out there bold. But the merch is not, trust me, is not a money maker. Where did you buy your shirt? From my merch site, revivallifestyleapparel.com. That's where my shirt's from. This is all my merch. I have about 30 designs on there. So yeah, merch is very, very expensive and the prices keep going up. So it means my margin's getting smaller and pretty much it's so bad that my 25% off code keeps having an error message because my margin's too small. Basically, if I give you guys 25% off, which I do for all the partners, I lose money. So they can't do it because it's negative money. That's how like they keep telling me, you need to raise your prices. And I'm like, dude, the shirts are already like what? 25, $30. But the company's like, well, you have no, you're making no profit, but it's like, Again, I didn't do the shirts for profit. So I'm probably going to have to change the partner code to 20% off because the 25%. So if I give you guys 25% off, it's actually 50% off because it's 50% off of the profit margin, which is puts you in the negative. It's kind of hard to explain, but it's 25% off, not their cut, my cut, which is actually like, I'm only getting like a 30% cut. So if I'm giving you 25% off, my profit's like less than 5%, which is too low for the actual website. So long story short, I might have to change it to 20% or hike my prices way up, which I don't want to do. But it's just, it's supply chain. It's, oh, I could give you a bunch of nerdy reasons why. Times are hard out here for real though. Stop spamming. Yeah, I don't know who's spamming. If somebody's spamming the chat, just, just mute them for five minutes. Just give them a timeout. All right, uh, when are you coming back to reach Paramount? I'm not sure. We need Carl up in here. I got you. How about some, how about some Carl in the rain? Hey, how do you like the rain, Carl? I, guys, I don't want to be rude. The only dates I have are Arizona and then my church I'll be at in February in Life Song in Stockton. I have no other dates for you. I'm so sorry. The moment I get dates, I'll give them to you guys. I used to preach in Virginia Beach all the time. I don't preach there anymore. Do you do in-person deliverance services? Yes, all the time. Your time is priceless. Thank you, Joy. I appreciate you. Uh, you said, how about snow? I got you. Will you ever come to Texas? Yes, I will this year sometime. The Arizona dates on the website, isaiahsaldivar.com slash schedule. It's January 22nd, 10.30 a.m. at uh, Without Walls Church in Mesa, Arizona. I'm going to be on here, guys, for just another, like, five minutes. Do you remember preaching at Morningstar? Of course, sorry, I remember Morningstar. Carl needs a little winter clothing. Uh, Lakeitha, I'm not going to read the Venmo on stream. I'm going to read it right after just because I've been live for over two hours and I kind of want to get off. What's Carl saying? I'm not sure. He's probably saying stop spamming in the chat. Bro, you ever going to get Todd, Mr. Todd White up in this crib? Uh, yeah, I will. I will. Todd White will get, will get on. He'll be on. Oh, exciting as well. Well, for some of you, some of you not, but it's okay. You just don't watch. Um, Dallas Jenkins, the chosen team reached out to me today and... They asked if, if I'd have uh, Dallas Jenkins on the podcast, which is pretty cool. So they, they said, hey, would you ever have Dallas on the podcast? I said, yes. So Dallas Jenkins will be coming on the podcast. And I will ask him all of the questions of, are you Mormon? Is the chosen a Mormon show? All the questions he's probably so tired of answering. I'll straight up ask him on the podcast. And I'm sure he'll be okay with that. But yes, I'll be asking him all the questions. Dallas Jenkins is a creator of the chosen. So yeah, I love the chosen. So he'll be on, and if you're like, oh, The Chosen, then just don't watch the podcast. But maybe it'll answer some of your questions for all of you that are, you know, anti-Chosen, anti-The Chosen. But that's cool. That happened today. Do you prophesy over people? Absolutely, yes. I prophesy over people at the altars when I'm praying for them. Can Dumbo say hi? Hey, we've been putting Dumbo in retirement. I got you. Poor Dumbo's been in retirement over here. Uh, he's evangel. He's an evangelical Christian. He's not Baptist.
Why did you put me on timeout? I want to know why I can't eat while I'm fasting. I didn't put you on timeout. Maybe one of the mods did. But you might, you were probably spamming the chat. And if you were spamming about locusts, maybe that's why they timed you out. Uh, Sharon, we talked about not eating while fasting. Fasting means to close your mouth and to not eat. So if you're eating while fasting, it wouldn't be fasting. So that's just basically why. But I didn't time you out. So maybe one of the mods did. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell Dallas Jenkins, you come on the podcast, but you got to put your boy in the show. I'll grow my hair out curly. I'll grow a beard. I'll get me up in that show. Okay. I got big old eyebrows. I could pass. I could pass. Put me in the show. I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a scene. You want to see Carl and the, there you go. What is happening here? Yeah, Friday, we're going to do an ask me anything type of show probably. And then we'll have some fun after we're done. We'll probably do that for an hour and then we'll hang out, have some fun. And, uh, you know, it's going to be good. Isaiah, future actor. Hey, let's go. Light, lighting on screen, lighting on screen. Do you say lightning? Lightning, is that what you said? I don't know, I like the snow. Snow just feels right, it just feels cozy. You got me on the TV, fireplaces going, chilling with the snow coming down on the stream. I like it, I like it. Also guys, I hope you noticed the difference in the quality. We've doubled our quality bit. Well, I don't want to go into the nerd details, but we doubled our quality on YouTube for live streaming. So I hope you noticed tonight. It was better quality. All right. How about this? If you genuinely noticed that the quality was better tonight than it usually is a week ago, type one in the chat. If you genuinely noticed. Okay. Jared said, I don't think Facebook is priority. Actually, Facebook and YouTube are the same. They both show up on the same screen for me. But Facebook just has a lot of few, a lot fewer people commenting. And I have a video, Jared, on generational curses if you want to check that out. Okay, you notice? Okay, good. Yeah, I doubled the bit rate. So, also, I'm very excited because we are going to be at the new studio. Well, I'm a nerd. So, I'm very excited. You guys are like, I don't even know what you're talking about. But we're going to be streaming or we're going to attempt attempt to stream in 4k so we did get some special equipment it's blurry for you we'll hit the little cogwheel and turn it on hd you probably have it on 360p so we're going to attempt our cameras have always been 4k you know full full 4k but we've never streamed in 4k but at the studio because the camera won't be right in my face we're going to attempt to stream to stream in 4k so it might it might be pretty great you do need a pretty, you know, beefy, beefy setup and like all the right stuff to do it. So hopefully it works out. But yeah, we're in 4K technically, but we're exporting to 1080p because stuff. Uh, we're not using DSLRs. We're using full frame mirrorless cameras. Bri Bri. Or Bri Bri, but I think it's Bri Bri. You're definitely not a nerd. You're smart. Yeah, I, I definitely am a nerd. Clinton Terriano, thank you so much. Isaiah said, tell Dallas to cast you as a role for the Apostle Paul. Would you be up for it? Plus, you're good at crying on cue. I would be down. I would be down. I need to get it. I ordered a new mic stand here because I'm tired of this one. Love you, brother. Thank you, Devin. I love you, too. Yeah, I'm going to be using the FX3s for the new studio. I, I'm using the Sony A7S III right now, which I absolutely love. I think it's the best for what we're doing, but I, I bought the FX3s for the new studio. They're basically the same as the A7S III. Yeah, full frame mirrorless. Can't beat them. Sony, come on now. If you're Canon, don't even talk to me. I love you still, but hey, we can't talk cameras. You know what I'm saying? First time I caught you live, welcome to the show. We're almost done. We're actually ending right now, but sorry. We'll be live again Friday at six o'clock. Yep, you are a nerd. I definitely am. I love I love being a nerd. Isaiah, do you have good cable management or cable spaghetti? 
I have pretty good cable management. It used to be amazing, but now it's a little more spaghetti because I've added and took things away. All right, guys, I need to get off here. I'll be live Friday for longer. Well, what do I mean longer? I've been live two hours. Should we make four-hour streams a normal thing this year? I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for sewing, giving, being a part. What an awesome, awesome night. Another one in the books. Episode 125 down. Whitney Nyland, thank you so much. Let me know when you fix the code. I'm going to work on it. I'm going to work on it. Love you guys. I will see you guys on Friday. You guys are awesome. See you guys. A lot of exciting stuff coming. Good night. Oh, hey. Didn't see you. I was just chilling down there listening. If this, if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Super easy, super free. Helps a lot. All right, so right now, stop what you're doing. Hit like. Okay, I'm going back down here. Bye. Oh, hey. Super easy, super free. Good night. Love you guys. You guys are legends. The fact that there's 2,100 of you still, awesome. Love you guys so much. Good night.